this Tech Talk video, we're going to talk about Azure Communication Services, what it is and how you can use it in your application. So what is Azure Communication Services? You may not have heard of it because it's very new. It caught my eye early on when it was in preview because as the definition says here from the docs, it allows you to build real-time multimedia capabilities into your app. And that means audio-visual type things. You can do chat, you can do SMS and more as we'll talk about momentarily. You can go to the docs link here if you wanna get more information right away. But let me walk you through kind of what it's for and why you'd use it, what scenarios, things like that. So first off, if you're building a web app, a mobile app, a desktop app, and you want to add something like audio video, whether it's one-to-one -one calls or one-to-many calls, then you could use ACS, Azure Communication Services. This would allow you to do what Teams does. And Microsoft Teams, the infrastructure behind it, is what actually ACS is built on top of. As of today, there's over 115 million active users using Teams, so it's pretty robust infrastructure that you can build on top of if you'd like. That's just one feature. If you'd also like to add real-time chat, you could also use ACS for that. It has all the backend infrastructure to make that happen, and it could scale again from one to 10 to many. And then you can even do phone type capabilities. You can do calls, you can do SMS, you can even integrate these different features here with bots so that you can automate different processes intelligently. There's a lot of different scenarios where you could use this. So if you're building an educational app, obviously the audio video capability and probably the chat would be very interesting. If you're building a sales app, you might have some SMS functionality where a customer can send something in and get back details. And we could go on and on and on with different scenarios here, but it's exciting because you only have to worry about the code. You don't have to worry about all the infrastructure, the servers, the encoding, all those types of things that are a lot more challenging to deal with. So let me walk you through really quickly kind of how it works from a 10,000 foot level view, and then we'll jump into a quick demo that's available on GitHub that you can go through yourself if you'd like. So if you're building an app, let's say it's a web app in this case, but again, it could be mobile, it could be desktop as well. The first thing you're gonna to have to do is build in some server-side functionality because you're gonna to need to connect to ACS to get a token. And the way we're gonna do that is through a call. ACS will be registered using the Azure portal, which by the way, I'm gonna show in a later video, but it's a very simple process, probably take you less than two minutes to set that up. And you're gonna get a connection string back. That connection string can be used then in the server side to make a call to ACS. And what you would do then is your client, whether it's mobile, web, or desktop, can then make a call to your backend code. It can then issue a token, and then that token can be used to actually generate the audio, the video, the chat, the SMS, whatever it is. And so that's kind of the general flow from a, at least a high level of how you would use ACS and get started with it. Now to kind of illustrate all of this, let me walk you through a demonstration. Here's a screenshot from the first page of it where you can set up your devices, such as your video and your microphone and things like that. Now this demo is provided by the ACS team. It's a calling hero demo, so it's pretty robust. And it's literally like embedding some of the different uh, conference apps you ha have out there for audio visual conferencing. And you can do that uh, right here in the web browser. It's super cool what you can do. So you can go to this link below and clone the repo if you'd like. And with that, let me go ahead and jump over to VS Code and I'll show you this demo. Okay, so jumping on over to the code here, I've already cloned the project that I mentioned in the previous link. And uh, there's gonna be a few basic steps to get this going. First off, you'll have to go through the readme. They'll have some details on what you'd need to set up in the Azure portal what the sample does, things like that. And they'll also have the steps I'm gonna walk you through here for how to get this up and running on your machine if you'd like to. Now this is a calling type of application. Now the first thing I would have to do is create a Azure communications resource up in uh, Azure. So you could use the Azure portal, you can use the Azure CLI, and I'll have some more details on that in a different video, but very simple to do. Once you've done that, you'll get a connection string, as I mentioned earlier, and that's gonna go in this demo's app settings file. 
Now from there, there's a backend piece and it's really small. That's this user token controller. That's gonna issue the token. This is a .NET Core backend, but it could be pretty much anything else uh, that's supported. And then this is the front end. This is the actual app that we're gonna run. And this is written in React. You'll see it has quite a few components. The first component you typically would start with is called group call. And if I open that up, you're gonna see it has a media gallery, child component. Media gallery, if you open that up, it allows for a local stream of video and then the remote streams of video, if you wanna kind of play with this more. Now, once you are ready to run this, you can come on in, uh, open up the calling folder here, or directory, and then the first thing you'll do, I'm gonna do it kind of step by step, even though we could jump ahead, is a .NET restore to get all your dependencies. And this is gonna load some ACS assemblies, as well as some other code that's used just on the server side. And this is basically setting up a RESTful API on the server side. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is a .NET build. Now, the first time I did this as a heads up, I actually got a build target error. Never really figured out why. So if you get that error, um, you could do a .NET clean if you want. What I did is went in and tried it again, but I deleted, if I go back in here, the bin, and the object folders that you see. So I kind of got rid of those and then I reran it and then it was fine. So hopefully you won't even have an issue, but if you do, that's kind of what I ran into. Now, the next step is we need to run it. So we need to launch our server. And what this does though, is not only launch the API, but it also launches and builds the React app. So you can kind of do it in one step. They've consolidated that into the build process. So we're gonna do .NET run now, since we just built it and we'll uh, go ahead and launch this. Now this will take a sec the first time to kind of fire everything up. So we'll kind of, through the magic of video, speed this up a little bit. So it looks like this is all done. I'm gonna come on back up and just click on this localhost 5001. So let me go ahead and open this up. And this is what you'll see, this exceptionally simple video calling, and then you can start the call, you can read a little bit more about it. Now, as a heads up, if you get an SSL here, then you may need to run the .NET cert type of command. And let me just show you that real quick. Let's open up another command prompt. If we come on in, we can do .NET dash dash help, and then you'll see dev certs. So we can do .NET dev certs, and then you can just keep adding help here if you're unfamiliar with this command. We wanna add HTTPS and then trusted support for it. So I can do HTTPS, uh, dash T I think it is, but let's do dash help. And yeah, trust. And then I'll do dash T. And what that'll do is if you don't have a uh, certificate, a developer certificate on your machine, this will kind of set that up for you. Let me log into that and there we go. So I already have one, that's why mine worked. But just as a heads up, you might hit that. So be aware of that uh, particular step there. So let's go back to the browser. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start a call. And this is gonna kick off the React components. Uh, before it does that, it's actually gonna call and get an access token. And then uh, I'll show you what it does. It's pretty neat. So the first thing it's gonna do is let me pick a username. I'll go ahead and say Dan, and then a uh, camera. I can't use this one. So I'm gonna pick my uh, kind of cheaper cameras over here. So I have a Logitech, and we'll go ahead and pick that microphone, although I'm not gonna turn that part on. And then I'm gonna enable it here. All right, so you can see behind the scenes, it's totally fake, it's a fraud. The whole show's a fraud, folks. It's a green screen. But uh, anyway, so we'll go ahead and uh, start the call here on this one. Now, I also have um, another camera, which I'm gonna have to simulate this, so I'll kinda look at this camera momentarily here. And what I can do is I can add other people. Now I can come in and change my setup. Okay, that's pretty neat. If you've used Microsoft Teams at all, you'll recognize these icons and things. But I can you know, disable video, uh, audio, I can share screen, that's pretty neat. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn that on and then uh, I'm gonna add other people. Now I'm on local host, so right now I can only test with me. However, uh, if you want, you could go to ngrok.com and you could, it's a tunneling mechanism you can get. And you could actually expose a URL that you, know, you could give out to your mom or your friend or whoever. And uh, they could try it out for you. So let's go ahead and uh, copy that and we'll come on back. We'll paste. 
And now I'm going to pick a different camera. So we'll call this Imposter Dan. And let me go ahead and pick, uh, this is a really cheap one. No quality guaranteed on this one. So, all right, well, there we go. It works, but it's, you know, not phenomenal in this case, but it'll work. So let's go ahead and start the call. And now we're going to have our local stream and what would be the remote stream right here you can see. Now, it's not super good quality on this, partially because of my camera, um, but that'll give you an idea of what you can do. And I'm not a real big fan of seeing myself on this. So you know what? We're going to leave. All right, so let's stop that. We'll shut it down. But that is what this demo does. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I first saw this, I went, okay, that's pretty cool. I could do some really fun uh, stuff with this. So let me go ahead and go back over to the code. We'll go ahead and stop the server. And just to give you a little more details then to wrap up. So we've already talked about there's an API. The React client calls this to get the access token. And then we have the client app right here. And if we go into source, components, this is the bulk of it. The ones you'll probably want to start with, though, as, our, as I mentioned, uh, group call. And then you have a local stream and there's a remote stream right here. And that kind of controls the one to many type of uh, thing. Now, this doesn't have chat or SMS or others. If you uh, go to the GitHub site for ACS in general, though, and I'll have some links again here at the end, you can actually get more info, though. Um, the docs are really good. You can walk through those and get started with a really basic example that's not React, by the way, if you want. And there's a lot of other fun stuff you can do. So I'm going to put some links down here. Uh, I just did a blog post on this. So if you're interested in a kind of begin to end, how to get this demo going, including registering your ACS uh, resource in the Azure portal, then this would have all that info in the blog post. And I'm going to do another video coming up that's going to go into that. So uh, thanks for giving me a listen here. Hopefully that helps you uh, get a little bit excited about ACS and what it can do. Thank you.